Guys, today we're doing uh, some more samples. This is Greystone Base, and uh, the customers requested a 50 50 mix of Arctic and black. So we worked out roughly three kilos per square meter. Obviously, we've got roughly half a square meter here, so we've mixed close to 700 uh, grams of the black and the white. We've mixed it all up. So now we're going to proceed to throw it on top. Um, Basically, with the weight with this one, uh, but on a, in a, on a site situation, you would um, pretty well throw it pretty well straight away. This is a lab, uh, lab condition, so we're now we're just going to cast the stone on top. Obviously, being a life where it is, it's quite simple. I've, I've quite simple application for here. And again, I must stress that an on site. It's going to be much harder, wind conditions, uh, different method of casting. So, remembering that we've made enough for these two. So, to correct us, to make sure we've done the right job, we've got to see what we've got left over. So, we're going to go to the next sample. Gently cast the stone over the top of the sample. Remembering to cover the edges because the edges are a problem. Um, they always seem to miss out, even on jobs on site. Give it a good cover. Cover some of the gaps if there is any gaps. You're never going to get it perfect, but a little bit of extra time now will give you your end, end results. And as you can see in the bucket, what we've got left over, you can see there's bugger all, so that three kilo per square meter range is not a bad estimate, depending on the customer and everything else. Hello guys, we've casted our stone using a wood float. Uh, half the times you probably can't use a bull float, but uh, so what we're going to do is again, this is a small sample, and if um, Brent in the background can stop the scrape of the shovel, if you had to hear what I'm saying. Um, so we're patting this down again, it's a control situation, we can do this, but to rem remember, we need to get. Work that pace up. Work that pace. Keep working that pace till it comes up. Do it completely recovered. That's what we've done last time, Brendan. Is that correct? There we go. For now, that's the way you leave. Let the air, air get to it. So we'll do the next one. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's another thing they got to remember on site that, that the levels, if they're down a little bit when you're casting, it's not going to matter because the stone does come up by three, four mils. So it does. Uh, you can see that now that it's pretty well level. A little bit low in that corner, but we'll pick that up a little slowly. Maintaining it also on site if you are going to use walk boards on top of this stuff and you're expecting it to pop back up, it's not going to pop back up. So you need to you need to have a bit of stone standing by. You might have your bucket nearby, go a bit more stone, right, throw it in there. It is concrete, it is what it is. So when you're casting, when you're casting a bit more care is needed, and you've got to cover that stone. There we go. We'll let that dry a bit, and then we'll start the troweling process, the steel trow process, where we completely smooth that over. In the site situation, obviously you'll be running your edges and whatever, but for display purposes and for samples, we won't, we won't have to worry about that. But the main thing is to get it as flat as you can and work that slurry up as much as you can. 
Now by letting the concrete sit is another trick. Once it sits, a little bit of the bleed water comes up. This makes it so much easier, uh, especially for you guys on site to uh, cover up the stone. That's it.